Here you see Ali Bargain Outlet. I bought it on May 19th. I paid $742.65 for that call option. I sold it on July 11th, two months later, for $2,966.28. That's a gain of $2,223.63. Hey guys, in this video, I'm going to talk about Building a retirement at age 50 or above, whatever your age may be. And I'm actually going to break this down. I'm going to do two lists of five. One is going to be for those 50 and above who are still working. I'm going to give you five suggestions. The other is for those 50 and above who are disabled. And I'm going to give you five suggestions. So let's get started. Five things. We'll start with the employed people. Five things with those who are still employed to build late retirement. One, you can work overtime or two jobs to build up your brokerage, then sell call options, fixed income. Now, I'm speaking about a brokerage account where you sell stocks. And don't tune out when I say that. If you're in this situation, please listen to the end of the video. And you're going to hear some very helpful information. You don't have to worry about knowing a lot about stocks. I'm going to explain all of that. So. I want to show you something. There is something called options. They are call options. And I have a video on my channel. I have two. One is called what is a call option. The other is what is a put option. But we're not going to go into all of that here. We're just going to speak about prices. Basically, an option is a promise, but it's a promise that you can buy or sell. If I sell you a call, I'm selling you a promise that you can buy 100 shares of a stock from me, right? So I'll use MetaFast as an example. MetaFast, if we look right here, it's at the, t it, the these prices are constantly fluctuating. But at the time I looked at it this morning, MetaFast was $61.74. Right? So if I wanted to buy 100 shares of MetaFast, it would cost me $6,174, right? Now, an option is a promise that somebody can buy shares of stock from you. And it tells you what price they could buy them from and when they have to buy them by. What's the expiration? So, if I was to sell a call on one call option for Metafast, meaning I would have to own 100 shares, $6,174, I could sell that share, I could sell that option for $430, right? That's $430 income in my pocket. Now, what happens with the call? First off, all of the calls I'm quoting to you are just for one month. So, if by the time the option is up, um, 
MetaFast is over the strike price, which is $60, then they buy those 100 shares from me for $60. But if MetaFast is under the strike price, I keep my shares and the $430. And now, if you had 200 shares of MetaFast, then you would be able to sell two call options. That's $860. So could you imagine a scenario where you're making $860 a month and not even selling your stocks? And if it goes up and they get the stocks, that's fine. They have to pay you the money for the stocks. In other words, they'd have to pay you $12,000 and you still keep the eight hundred and sixty. Then you can just buy another stock and repeat the whole process. What about Nexstar Media? Nexstar Media is $173 a share, or at least it was. So $100 will cost you $17,300. What if you sold a call of Nexstar Media? with a $170 strike price. Well, in that case, you would get back $760 just for selling the call. And if they buy, let's say the stock goes or stays above 170 they still have to pay you 17,000 for your 100 shares and you keep the 760 Hershey company $191.02 so 100 shares would cost you $19,102 the strike price is 190 you can get 650 for that. Now, these aren't always equal. As you see, Nexstar Media is a cheaper stock, but they're giving you a better return. Hershey is only giving you 650. Genuine Parts Company, they are giving you they're a hundred and thirty eight dollars and sixty six cents so a hundred shares will cost you thirteen thousand eight hundred and sixty six dollars and with a one thirty five strike price you will collect five hundred and ninety dollars now you can move this strike price up you can move it up to one forty and then you would get less money for the monthly total but now you'd only have to sell your shares if the stock goes above 140 lastly we have biogen and with biogen i showed you two strike prices the lower one 245 and the higher one 250 so for biogen 247.73 and with for um which would cost you twenty four thousand seven hundred and seventy three dollars to get a hundred shares, but the monthly total that you would get from selling that option would be um one thousand one hundred and eighty dollars, and here at the bottom we have. Biogen with the 250 strike price that you can see. So that's one thing you can consider building up the money to sell calls. Now, the second thing is, 
And the first one I mentioned was selling options. People feel like options are risky. Buying options can be risky. And I'm going to explain why. Selling options is not as risky. Because when you sell an option, you have three out of four ways of coming out successful. Let me go back for a second here. So let's say MetaFast is $61, and I sell it with a strike price of $65. If the stock moves up to 60, let's say the stock moves up to $64. I'm successful that way because I collect the money from selling the option and I keep my 100 shares. Let's say the stock goes sideways. I'm successful that way because I keep my 100 shares and I keep the money that I made for selling the option. Let's say that the stock goes down a little bit. I'm still successful because I keep the option, the money from the option, and um, I keep my shares. If the stock goes above 65, I'm still successful because all the money from whatever price the stock is at right now, 61.74, up to 65, I make that money. I get paid my money for selling the shares. And then I keep the money for selling the option. The only way I'm unsuccessful is if the stock price falls and keeps falling. So selling options gives you three out of four. Out of four out of four possibilities, three of them leaves you successful. Now we're gonna talk about buying options. Buying options can be risky, but have higher potential returns. So take the small losses and monopolize when things go right. And I'll explain what I mean by that. I'm going to get a little personal today. I'm showing you some screenshots of some of my option purchases and sales. Here you see Ali Bargain Outlet. I bought it on May 19th. I paid $742.65 for that call option. I sold it on July 11th, two months later, for $2,966.28. That's a gain of $2,223.63. UNP. I bought UNP for on April. Well, Ollie was 22. I bought UMP on April 6th of 23 for $1,896.66. I sold it four days later. I didn't like the way it was moving. So I sold it four days later, April 10th. For $1,959.32, $62.66. If you're not feeling comfortable with the way things are moving, get out of it. Johnson & Johnson. I bought it on April 3rd, 2023 for $860.66. 
I sold it on May 4th, a month later, for 1162.33, a gain of $301.67 in one month. Now, Akamai, I bought that on March 20th, 2023, for $604.66. And... I sold it for six seventy eight thirty eight. I put down a minus, but it was actually a positive. I made a little money on it, seventy three dollars and sixty seven cents. And AMN was um. I made a, I lost a hundred and thirty one dollars on AMN. I bought it on April seventeenth. Sold it on May 4th. I lost $131 on that. But when you're expecting it to go up in options and it goes in the reverse, don't stick around. Get out quickly because options move in percentages very quickly. In stocks, you can make or lose two three percent in a day in options it could be 10 20 30 percent in a day and applied material i bought it on this is july 18th of 22 for 11.65 sold it on august 8th of 22 for 1809.31 that's a gain of $644.31 Cirrus Cirrus Logic bought it on July 12th of 22 for $843.65 sold it a month later August 5th for $1,777.31, a gain of $933.66. And Nova Limited, NVMI, bought it on July 11, 2022, for $1,100.65, sold it a month later, August 3rd, 2022. For $2,053.30, a gain of $952.65. So, options can be very promising. You can make a lot of money, but if you're doing it wrong or if you're not being careful, you can also lose a lot of money. So, but options is the possibility if you're strapped. And there's a video on the channel, which is better, stocks or options? And it goes into details about both of those things. What's the advantages of stocks and what's the disadvantages of stocks? What's the advantages of options and what's the disadvantages of options? You have to realize when you're dealing with options, you're dealing with stocks. Options are just a derivative of stocks. They derive their value from stocks. So you can't deal with options if you don't understand stocks. And um, but we have videos, series on the channel, which is this week's, um, this week's stock winnings, as well as this week's option pick, where we break all of that stuff down for you. So we're getting to number three now. Use margin. 
to buy fundamentally sound stocks at annual low prices. And I'm going to explain what I mean by that. Here we're looking at some more statements. You see Capital One, 85 shares. Capital One, four shares. Capital One, three shares. Capital One, eight shares. All buying. So I started with 85 shares. When money built up, bought four more, bought three more, bought eight more, until I had 100 shares. After having those 100 shares, you see, this is where I sold them. So we have the, um, well, it has the amount, but it doesn't have the quantity. Actually, here's the quantity here. Here's 100 shares that I sold that day. Now, why am I showing you this? I made $11,096.69 when I sold these stocks. But, Stock cost me $9,337.30 to buy. The only problem is I didn't have $9,337.30 in the account at that time. But if you have a brokerage account, you can apply for margin. No credit report involved. You just ask the broker for margin. Since your money is already in the account and it's invested in the stocks, they know where it is. If you have more than $2,000 in the account for most accounts, they'll give you up to 100% in margin. What that means is if you want to buy, say, $10,000 worth of stocks, but you have $5,000 in the account, you're fine. You can buy those $10,000 worth of stocks with the $500 you have in the account, 5,000 you have in the account, I'm sorry, and the 5,000 in margin. So half of these stocks that I bought was with margin. Now, let's take a closer look and see what happened. At the end of the day, I made $1,759.39 on that trade. Now, let's look at the dates. The first share of the first 85 shares of Capital One, I bought on May 16th of 2023. And I sold them all on June 16th of 2023. That's one month. I made $1,759.39 in one month. But let's divide that by two. And if you divide that by two, that's $879.69. Now, you're asking, why did I divide it by two? Because if I didn't use margin, I would have only made $879.69 that month. But because I used margin, I made $1,759.39 that month. Now, you're asking, okay, but you have to pay interest on that money you borrowed. And yes, you're right. And when you ask for margin, you want to call your broker and ask them what's the interest rate they pay. 
But in my case, we're going to look at the interest rate. So I made $1,759.39 in that one month. How much did I have to pay in interest? $30.34, leaving me with a profit of $1,729.05. So if I didn't use margin, I would have left $879.69 on the table. Now, we're in a day where people hate credit, People are scared of credit. And I agree with you about the use of credit when you're buying liabilities, things that go down in value. But when you're buying assets, things that go up in value, credit is wonderful. If you're buying rental real estate that you're going to rent out, or you're buying a stock that's making money. Now, I know you're saying, well, Dwayne, what if the stock's not making money? What if the stock is going down? Then sell it. Why would you hold the stock that sell, that's going down? But margin can be a wonderful thing when used the right way. Going to use another example. Next star. 68 shares and 7 shares, totaling 75. Bought them for 167.53 a share, then 167.72 a share. Sold them for 182.42 a share. So, and that was. I don't have the dates on here, but it wasn't long. So, I bought them for $12,566.49. Later sold them for 13000 $681.38. That is a profit of $1,114.89. But I used margin for half the purchase. I didn't purchase everything with cash. What would have happened if I just used my cash and not margin? Divide by two. Instead of making $1,114.89, I would have made $557.44. So, now you're asking, okay, how much interest did you pay on that money that you borrowed? Interest was fifty-five dollars and forty-nine cents. So if I was worried about the interest, I would have lost out on five hundred and fifty-seven dollars and forty-four cents just for fifty-five dollars and forty-nine cents. After paying the interest. I still had a gain of $1,059.40. So, margin is something you want to consider. And one of the, I feel is one of the best things about brokerage or having access to a brokerage account that you can make money not just from your money, but you can make money from other people's money. Now, when you buy things on margin, it's complicated to withdraw money until you pay back that borrowed money. But I really don't see that as a problem 
Because if you're trying to build your account up, you're not looking to be putting money in, taking money out, putting money. What you put in, you're putting it in there to leave it in there for a while to build up. So let's get to number four. Push your hobby on YouTube to get monetized and get more income. And I can think of a couple of examples. I remember a friend who was into photography and he, he actually used to drive Uber, but he'd do photography on the side and he charged for it. Well, what about starting a YouTube channel teaching about that stuff and then eventually getting monetized so that now you're making money from spreading that knowledge? I have a knowledge of stocks and investing. And I said, you know what? It's time for me to get this information out there. And then if I get monetized, I'll get money helping people. And combine with others to create an American version of a SUSU while incorporating an S block. It sounds like I'm speaking another language, but I'm going to explain what I mean by that. I've known people from the Caribbean and other places, and they use what's called a SUSU. So, how do you make money in a SUSU? The group selects a treasurer who collects the members' contributions. The pool rotates until all members have been paid out their agreed-upon share. For example, if 10 members contribute $100 a week, each week a member may receive a $1,000 lump sum, and the cycle will repeat after 10 weeks. So, it's a way for people to save without saving. Because you may have $100, and what are you going to do? You're just going to spend it. Or maybe you have 200 Maybe you get up to 300 You're just going to spend it. But if you're giving that $100 to the SUSU every week, then at the end of so many weeks, they're giving you a thousand dollars now you've just forced yourself to save hopefully you have a treasurer you can trust but now you've just forced yourself to save but we have access to more here in the united states we have what's called an s block Many rich people know about it, but others don't. An S block, and I'm going to read this definition, then explain it more clearly. An S block is a security based line of credit. A security based line of credit allows individuals to borrow funds using the assets in their investment portfolio as collateral without having to liquidate the securities. What do I mean by that? You have $25,000. But I, I'm going to use a scenario of some friends I know. They were going to buy a house, and they had a down payment. And I was telling them, invest it. They didn't want to do it. But this is what I was trying to explain to them. You can take, let's say you have $25,000 down payment for hours. You can take that $25,000 and put it into what's called an S block. And you can buy fundamentally sound stocks at their 52-week low price 
with that money. And then you can get a loan from the institution that gave you the S block against your own assets. They vary. Some may give you 70%. Others may give you 50%. But you can borrow against your own assets. You don't have a time schedule where you have to pay it back. And it's at a very low interest rate. So now you own $25,000 worth of fundamentally sound stock that's growing in value. And you have the money to go out and put the down payment down to buy your house. But you still have money because you still have those stocks that you bought. And as those stocks grow in value, maybe a few years, maybe two or three years, because they're fundamentally sound and they're at their annual low price, you can sell those stocks. The capital gains tax will be lower because you've owned them for more than a year. And they will have grown enough in value where you can pay off the loan and you'll still have money left over to buy new shares of stock. So imagine doing the same concept of a susu, but instead of doing the susu where you're just saving money, now you're doing that to invest money. And if anybody in the SUSU needs quick access to cash, if the SUSU is in an S block, then you can just go down and withdraw their cash and get it to them. So just something to think about. Now we've covered those who are still employed. Now we're going to get to those who are disabled. And they haven't really built up retirement in their life. Or maybe they haven't even worked in their life. So they don't even have, they're not even getting the social security or whatever the case may be. Disability the way that they would like. So, I, I believe this was Kiyosaki. I can't remember where I heard this, but... I believe it was Kiyosaki. I once heard people, even rich people, always work with people who bring them value, more money. And that made sense to me, sense to me. So you can reach out to family and friends with financial advice, become a sort of profit so to speak. A lot of times you'll see people who have money, they tend to avoid people because everybody's always asking them for some. But the ones they don't avoid are the ones who are bringing them some, not asking them for something. Right? So... We have this week's, I keep saying we, I need to say I. This week's stock winners, I put it out every week, letting you know what fundamentally sound stocks are at their 52-week low price, or were at their 52-week low price, and are starting to move up. I put a new one out every week. Also, there's one I just recently released, results of November 13th to December 31st. On the channel, you can look at that, and it will show you stocks that I suggested two months ago, of which 
you can find those videos in this. You can find the November 13th issue of this week's stock winners just to confirm that I suggested those stocks and see where they moved up to by the end of the year. Right? So you have the resources available to you. Also, I do videos where I analyze the stocks. And if you go to my playlist, you can see around 11 stocks in there that I've analyzed. The only problem I run into is people don't listen to the analysis. But if you drop a comment telling me that you want me to do the, an analytical breakdown on any of the stocks I have in this week's stock winners or in this week's option pick, I will do that video and put it on the channel for you. Just people don't ask me for it for some reason. Okay. And we spoke about this before. Push a hobby on YouTube to get monetized. What are you good at? What are you knowledgeable of? I'm knowledgeable of stocks and investing. So I created my channel. It's not long. It's just been about three months now. But up to 3,000 plus subscribers. And the channel is growing. And when you have 1,000 subscribers and 4,000 watch hours, then you can get monetized on YouTube. How much can you squeeze out of disability? And I've already shown you some of the results from buying options. You can buy options to try and build up quick cash. You don't have to be an expert. And I have your back with this week's winning stocks, which I just showed you, this week's option picks, and breaking financial news. If you don't have the funds, Tell somebody that you've been depending on your plan and how that will relieve them. In other words, some of the same people who are helping you financially now, they may give you some of the funds to do what you need to do. Why? Because anybody would like to teach somebody how to fish rather than having to feed them every day. You want to teach them how to become self-reliant. And if they see that you're on the course to getting there, they may assist with that. Not only that, the same information that you're sharing may help them as well. So we have this week's option picks where we either pick or follow an option every week. And like I said, any of the stocks that's mentioned in this week's stock winners or this week's option picks, drop a comment asking for the analysis and I will create it for you. And we spoke about the susu before, so you can gather others to form a susu and put the funds in an S block. But in this case, have them give you a small part of the portfolio for managing it. So you come to this web, to this YouTube channel, consume as much information as you can, and then. Once you get good at it, you start managing it for them under the condition that 
they give you a part. Okay. And set up plans for people to sell, not buy, but for people to sell call options. And we spoke about that in the beginning of the video. So these are just a few things to consider that could be done if you're in a position of having no kind of funds, no kind of retirement or anything, and it's late in life. Things if you're working or things that if you're in a disabled situation. Okay, guy. So in any event, also, if you have a house, we have a video on the channel that you would definitely want to look at. How would you like to never make another mortgage payment? Get rid of your mortgage. No, don't get rid of your house. You'll still own the house. And the mortgage will still be getting paid but you won't have to pay it from your pocket or from your paycheck. So I would suggest that you take a look at that video. In any event, guys, I'm signing out. You guys have a great day. Have a great weekend. And I look forward to speaking to you in the next video.